Welcome to Reality Theory, Episode 3, Joe Biden and Strom Thurmond, The New Jim Crow Meets the Old Jim Crow. The title comes from a book by Michelle Alexander called The New Jim Crow, in which she compares the mass incarceration of Black men today and over the past 20 years to the Jim Crow segregation laws of the South, which led to Black people being treated as second-class citizens, lynchings, a lot of repression. And it's very interesting that there is a connection between the old Jim Crow laws of segregation and the new Jim Crow laws of mass incarceration. And that connection is Joe Biden and Strom Thurmond, uh, two very good friends who Joe Biden actually spoke at his funeral. And if you think about people you're going to speak at their funeral, these are people you love, people you admire, people whose visions you cherish. And Joe Biden actually gave the eulogy at Strom Thurmond's funeral. And uh, this picture right here, which I'm about to show you, um, this picture right here is actually more offensive than the Jerry Jones picture to me. In that, in the Jerry Jones picture, we have a young 14-year-old kid or man, whatever, in the grips of a racist mob, uh, obviously part of some type of racism, protesting black students. Now, that's horrible. Um, I would really like to know where Jerry Jones was in his 20s and 30s. Did he evolve from, from then? Uh, I'm really not sure that he did. But here we have Joe Biden as a grown adult Seemingly in a lovable pose, a, a great friendship picture here with Strom Thurmond, who is one of the most horrible people in American history, in my opinion. And so I'm kind of inspired by Kanye to do this for two reasons. So Kanye brought a white supremacist to meet Trump, and it caused a lot of controversy for Trump that Trump was meeting with this white supremacist. And then later, Kanye even went more off the hook. He went even more crazier, and he began to praise Hitler. Um and this is really interesting to me. I, I'm not going to compare Strom Thurmond to Hitler. He might be more of a second tier Nazi, a Himmler, a Goebbels, a Eichmann, a Klaus Barbie. But his philosophy was very similar to Hitler's philosophy. And the only reason he wasn't able to do the evil things that Hitler did is because he never really came into full power. He was a senator, and as a senator, he did a lot of horrible things to Black people, a lot of horrible things to Black leaders like Martin Luther King. But he was really never able to take the American army and used them against black people, which he kind of threatened to do in this in his career. So let's look at some of the horrible things that Strom Thurmond has done in his life. So he ran as a Jim Crow segregationist presidential candidate in 1948. So his whole campaign was segregation. His whole campaign was keeping black people as second class citizens. Nothing about the military, no economics. That was his main platform. That was what he was running on. He wrote the Southern Manifesto opposing Brown versus the Board of Education in 1957. And Brown versus the Board of Education was the Supreme Court ruling that set the standard for integration in the United States, particularly in schools. And Sean Thurman was very opposed to having schools, not even any type of integration. He wasn't any type of white schools. He didn't want any black students, any white schools. He really wanted an apartheid-like system in America. In 1957, he also gave a 24-hour hour filibuster in opposition to the Civil Rights Act. So I talk a lot, and it's hard for me to talk for 24 minutes. To talk for 24 hours means you're not sleeping, you, you're, you're not eating. So this man had so much hatred in his heart for Black people that in order to oppose civil rights and stop a bill passing, he talked for 24 hours. So this is where people get the idea of the racist filibuster because Strom Th Thurmond used it for racist means. And a lot of Democrats right now want to get rid of the filibuster because of Strom Thurmond. So the guy who Joe Biden's friend is, is the founder of the racist filibuster that the Democrats now want to get rid of. So after John F. Kennedy introduced civil rights legislation and Lyndon B. Johnson passed civil rights legislation, your man, Strom Thurmond, was so disgusted that he switched from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. So let's listen to Strom in his own words. What, is he, what are his views on race? There are enough troops in the army to force their sullen people to break down segregation and admit the Negro race into our fields, into our swimming pools, into our homes, and into our churches. Now, this is kind of where I get the Hitler, Goebbels, Eichmann comparison in that he was ready to go to war over black people being allowed in the swimming pools. That's basically what he's saying. He's ready to fight, start a new civil war over African-American children being allowed to use the same public swimming pools that white children are. Now, this is really ridiculous. This is a horrible thing. And not only was he horrible politically, but he was a horrible human being. 
Now, Strom Thurmond, when he was in his 20s, he fathered a, a child with his black maid, his underage black maid, had a daughter, hid it from the world. The daughter didn't come out till he was dead. He actually was paying the mother and the daughter off just to keep quiet because he knew it would be a scandal if it would ever come out that Mr. Super White Supremacist had an African-American daughter. And what does this say about a man's personality? You have a child that is Black, but you spend your whole career trying to oppress Black people. And like, what does that say about you? Also, into when he was 91, when he was seven times Chelsea Clinton's age, seven, Chelsea Clinton was 13, according to Tom DeLay, Strom Thurmond was sexually harassing Chelsea Clinton right in front of her dad. And what, is, what does that say? That's that's really crazy. Um, he also sexually harassed Barbara Boxer, who was a senator, and was accused of taking bribes from a CIA officer involved in selling arms to Libya. So by any standard of a human being, any standard of a human being, he, he's horrible. He's voted for every war possible. He's been for, for the military, for the CIA. Like, by any standard of a human being, Strom Thurmond is horrible. So I can imagine that when Joe Biden, because people say Joe Biden is good, Joe Biden told me and other people that we don't vote for him, we're not Black. So he must be really pro-Black, so pro-Black that there's no question that Black people should vote for him and if we don't, we're not Black. That I'm sure that when he went to Strom's Strom Thurmond's funeral. He spat on his grave and he smoked a Strom Thurmond pack. So I'm looking forward to seeing the disrespect that pro-Black Joe Biden is going to give to Strom Thurmond on his funeral. Strom and I shared a life in the Senate for over 30 years. We shared a good life there and it made a difference. I grew to know him. I looked into his heart and I saw a man the whole man. I tried to understand him. I learned from him. And I watched him change oh so subtly. Like all of us, Strom was a product of his time. But he understood people. He cared for them. He truly wanted to help. He knew how to read people, how to move them, how to get things done. Never forget we went down to see President Reagan, he and I had the Thurman Biden crime bill. And he was, we sat in a room with Senator, with President Reagan, and with Ed Meese, Jim Baker, and William French Smith, the Attorney General. And Strom started to try to convince the President to sign on to our bill. And he turned to me, he said, Joe, explain it to him. So I did my little bit, and it looked like the President was coming along, and I swear the Lord in the Lord's house is true story. And with that, as Ed Meese, Mr. Vice President, thought the President might be convinced, Ed Meese stood up and said, Mr. President, time to go. Time to go. And with that, the President very dutifully looked, not dutifully, but very respectfully looked over and said, well, Strom, we were sitting next to him either side. It's, uh, I have to go. And he had his hands on the table. The President, the President went to get up like this, and the Strom grabbed his arm and pulled him back down his seat. <laughs> I never saw anybody do that to a President. And the president, true story, the president looked very sternly at Strom. And Strom said with his hand still on his arm, he said, Mr. President, you all get to be my age, you'll understand, you got to compromise. <laughs> um, so he seemed to be very complimentary, actually, of Strom Thurmond in talking about getting things done. And one of the things he talked about getting things done was a crime bill. And we get into these Thurmond-Biden crime bills. So... Biden is working with someone who he knows, should know, is a white supremacist who's dedicated his whole political career to the oppression of black people. And now he's working with this guy to get a crime bill done. And I really wonder what effect this kind of crime bill had. And we'll get into that later. So another thing Joe Biden did is he praised, he praises Strom Thurmond for his segregated schools. So he thinks Strom Thurmond was a great person because Strom Thurmond had separate but equal segregated schools. So let's listen to Joe Biden. The New York Times ran a lead editorial saying Strom Thurmond, Hope of the South, and talked about how he had set up reading programs, get better books for separate but equal schools. This is a man. <laughs> reading programs for separate but equal schools. This is this this is what uh this is Strom Thurmond did that was good. He set up reading programs for his inherently, inherently racist school system. 
Good for you, Storm Thurman. So what else did Joe Biden and Storm Thurman do together to get things done? In the 70s, what they did is the old segregationists, you know, they, they lost the battle on integration. So there was a new battle. The new battle was school busing. So there's two types of segregation. There's de jure segregation, which is a Latin word, de whatever. Uh, and there's also de facto segregation. It just means it's not necessarily a law that things are segregated. It's just known, right? So in order to really get true integration in the country, there was a proposals that Black students, often from poor neighborhoods, will be bused into white students, often in richer neighborhoods, so they could get a better chance at education, right? And this was very popular. I think a lot of people don't know that a lot of school systems are based on property taxes. So poor neighborhoods, a lot of time, have schools that are underfunded, and rich neighborhoods have schools that are overfunded. So in order to get a type of equal opportunity of education, people were proposing busing and students from black neighborhoods, we bus to different white neighborhoods. Not all of them were rich neighborhoods. Um, some were not. So, but Joe Biden really took this issue and he worked with Jesse Helms. This is him right there. Jesse Helms is another notorious white supremacist. So him, Jesse Helms and Strom Thurmond were the leading voices against busing in the nation. So let's hear what Joe Biden has to say about busing Bus Joe, Joe Biden says on busing, the real problem with busing is you take people who aren't racist, people who are good citizens, who believe in equal education and opportunity, and you stunt their children's intellectual growth by busing them to an inferior school and you're going to fill them with hatred. It's interesting. What about the black students in the inferior schools? Like, is that not a problem? His big problem is not with inferior schools, it's that white students may have to go to those inferior schools and then they'll become racist because their children are going to the inferior schools where the black people are forced to go to. So this is really interesting dog whistling a little bit and kind of encouraging regular white people who aren't racist <laughs> to be angry at busing because their children's intellectual growth are gonna be stoned, are, is gonna be stunted because they're gonna have to learn with black children. Another thing he says is the most racist thing, the most racist thing to him was busing. The, the concept of busing was racist to him. And the reason why is he says, what it says in order for your child with curly black hair, brown eyes and dark skin to be able to learn anything, he needs to sit next to my blonde haired, blue eyed son. That's racist. Who the hell do we think we are? The only way a black man or woman can learn if they rub soldiers with my white child. Now he's using a lot of racist dog whistles here. He's definitely talking about black child with their curly black hair, brown eyes and dark skin, dark skin and his child with blue eyes and blonde hair. Sounds, sounds almost Hitlerish, you know, I don't know. Um, that's racist. And notice he says a black man, a black man and a white child. So he's, he's really getting a little extra racist here in that he's, trying to say that black men will be coming into school systems with white children. So this is the type of rhetoric that caused a lot of tension over busing. I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's right next to Boston. And they had a lot of a busing issue in Boston in the 70s and where you had students from the black neighborhood of Roxbury were being bused into the white neighborhood of South Boston, which was a poor working class Irish community. And the rhetoric from Biden and other people like Strom Thurmond and uh, Jesse Helms caused a lot of racial tension in Boston. And we'll we'll look at what he has to say. And he's almost predicting it, but he's also kind of promoting it in this next quote we have on Joe Biden on busing. So he says, I got to move this, excuse me. Ooh. Unless we do something about this, my children are going to grow up in a jungle, the jungle being a racial jungle with tensions having built so high that it's going to explode at some point. We have got to make some moves on this. So this is, again, a lot of code words, racial jungle, jungle kind of code words, concrete jungle. And it's very interesting because his children didn't grow up in a racial jungle at all. They didn't even grow up in public schools where there was any chance of them being integrated. They all went to private schools, but he's talking about his children going up in a racial jungle, which very much seems to have very negative racial connotations. And these, this type of language definitely promoted a lot of racial tension. And I really don't know about Joe Biden. I'm really amazed that he was elected. So let, let's go on and find out more about Joe Biden. So Joe Biden said he was the new George Wallace. I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with George Wallace. I'm sure a lot of you are. 
But he was another notorious white supremacist who he's in the movie Forrest Gump because he was blocking off the University of Alabama when the black students were trying to get in. So another notorious white supremacist. And actually, he was praised by Joe Biden on a few occasions. And Biden even bragged about being praised by George Wallace. So when Biden went down south in 87, he would like really try and cater to the south. So he'd be like, hey, George Wallace praised me as one of the best politicians in 1973. And Delaware is technically part of the south. And Delaware was a part of the Civil War. We were with you guys. So he's a real He's a real pair to bear. So let's look at what he says about him being George Wallace. Uh, let's, let's, let's pull back a little bit. because I want to get back to this. Liberals have rejected common sense. Anyone who has studied the area knows that we don't have a workable rehabilitation program. Yet we continue to insist that the function of prison is to rehabilitate, not to punish. Get back to that. I might come back to haunt you, Joe Biden, when you say stuff like that. Why should we apologize for locking up criminals? So this is in 1975. So he's always been Mr. Tough on Crime, lock him up, lock him up. How did we let that happen? I think law and order is a traditional liberal issue, not a conservative issue. I think the Democratic Party could stand a liberal George Wallace, someone who's not afraid to stand, not afraid to stand up and offend people, someone who won't pander. Okay, that's very funny. Someone who won't pander, but would say what the American people know in their gut is right. So he is praising George Wallace as a man who says what in his gut was right. And he's saying that he is the liberal version of that. So let's take a look of what George Wallace is and if Biden is the liberal George Wallace. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> That is interesting. So this is the person who Joe Biden bragged about being praised by. And he also said he wanted to be the liberal version of. So another thing besides busing that Strom Thurmond and Joe Biden worked on was a lot of these anti-crime bills. And here's a kind of montage of a lot of these anti-crime bill speeches that Biden was making. Some of them were sponsored by Strom Thurmond. And to show the kind of contrast between his rhetoric for black people when it's all about oppressing black people versus his family, his blonde eyed, blue eyed son. You know, uh, I'm going to is kind of hyper imposed with Hunter Biden smoking something. I'm not sure if it's drugs. I'm not promoting drug use at all or showing drug use. It might be tobacco, but it also might be crack. So let's watch Joe Biden rail against criminals and drug addicts and talk about how he wants to lock them up while his son Hunter looks on. If you have a piece of crack cocaine no bigger than this quarter that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar. We passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. You get no probation. You get nothing other than five years in jail. Judge doesn't have a choice. Under our forfeiture statutes, you can, the government can, take everything you own, everything from your car to your house, your bank account, not merely what they confiscate in terms of the dollars from the transaction that you've just got caught engaging in. They can take everything. I don't care why they become a sociopath, we have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society. They are in jail, away from my mother, your husband, our families. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. And I think this really highlights Biden's hypocrisy with his Strom Thurmond crime bills. Now, one of the biggest pieces of legislation that he passed was the 100 to 1 crack free coke laws. That means if you got caught with one gram of crack cocaine, you would do as much time as someone who got caught with 100 grams of raw cocaine. And th this was done at a time where crack cocaine was severely impacting the Black community and targeting Black people. So it really resulted in a lot of Black people being incarcerated for cocaine. And we heard before how Biden does not believe in rehab. But when it comes to the son Hunter, who has done a lot a lot a lot of drugs a lot of crack the same the same drug that joe biden made a law against 
with five years if you get caught with one of them. That's what Hunter Biden did. So if you add up all the crack Hunter Biden smoked, getting on the text messages and the videos, he would get like 5,000 years in jail, right? For one one gram is five, five years. So a thousand grams. Yeah. Um, if you look at the kind of text messages revealed by Hunter Biden, not only was he a drug user, but he distributed drugs, not necessarily being a drug dealer, but he was giving drugs to all his hooker friends. Right. He was giving out crack everywhere. So he was distributing drugs. He was involved in prostitution. And I know people say it's no big deal. It's just drugs. It's just hookers. I feel the same way. But unfortunately, there are millions of people who have been in jail for drugs in the United States, millions of women who have been in jail for prostitution in the United States. So these things are a big deal when it comes to black people, poor people, minorities and immigrants. But Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, has gotten all the protection from Joe Biden, covering him up, covering up his crimes, and again, paying for his rehab. Rehab doesn't work, Joe, Joe says, but Hunter Biden gets to go to $20,000 rehab, come back, $30,000 rehab. Meanwhile, the millions, hundred thousands, whatever the number of is of people who Joe Biden locked up in the 80s and 90s, they didn't have a chance to go to rehab. They didn't have a chance to beat their addiction. They were just locked up, taken away from their families, taken away from society. So so again, I, I I think it's 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 just horrible. I don't want to continue to rant about that. So what people say is that Joe Biden is the architect of mass incarceration. I'm not sure that's correct. He's definitely one of the builders. He's definitely on the construction team for mass incarceration. But I think we really got to look at this graph to kind of see where mass incarceration started and how Joe Biden's involvement helped accelerate it. So in around 1970, 1971, Nixon launched the war on drugs. So the war on drugs was a whole bunch of harsh laws for people, nonviolent drug offenders. So that's when a lot we have the start of nonviolent drug offenders going to jail. We move on. At the same time, right? Okay. At the same time, we had the Vietnam War happening and a lot of heroin was coming back with these soldiers from Vietnam. And that also helped contribute to the incarceration. Interesting enough, the CIA was accused of bringing in a lot of this heroin. So we could see a de uh, strong connection between the CIA wars and incarceration rates and also drug addiction. So incarceration keeps on going on. It flattens out a little bit under Carter. As soon as Reagan gets in office, it accelerates a little bit, slows down. Now, here's where we have these very important crime bills that Joe Biden wrote with Strom Thurmond. So he's basically writing laws, knowing that they're going to target black people, working with the white supremacists on laws that will target black people. Right. So that's what he's doing. And the anti-crack bill was huge that it really targeted not only black drug dealers, but anyone who might have been smoking crack around crack, low level drug dealers, real mass incarceration. And then goes on in 1991. He did another crime bill with Strom Thurmond. So a lot of people say the 94 crime bill caused mass incarceration. I, I the, Shown by the graph was already happening and definitely continued mass incarceration, accelerated even, but that was just one part of many of Joe Biden's crime bills that had a horrible effect on African-Americans. So I'm just really, I'm just really surprised this guy actually became president and that he had support from black people after supporting people like Strom Thurmond. And again, it's, I, it's not lightly when I compare him to Hitler or a Nazi. If you look at his views, if you look at his actions, if you look at his personality, horrible person. And Joe Biden not only praised him, he gave his eulogy at his funeral. That is like, that is right, right. Um, Offset gave the, they gave the eulogy at Takeoff's funeral. Like eulogies are reserved for your closest friends and supporters and Joe Biden gave the eulogy for Strom Thurmond, who was a really horrible person. And then the two of them worked together on stopping busing, on stopping Black people from getting equal education. The two of them worked together on all these crime bills that targeted Black people for drug use. So I don't know. I think that we need to keep the same energy for Jerry Jones and Kanye that we have for Joe Biden. If we're going to punish Jerry Jones for being involved in racism, we surely need to <laughs> target... Your man Joe Biden for his long-standing 30-year friendship, 30-year friendship with the with the racist. And he will say that, oh, he changed his ways. He never changed his ways. He stayed racist. He just moved from the old Jim Crow to the new Jim Crow. And Joe Biden will say, but he voted for Martin Luther King holiday. 
Strom Thurmond was the man who asked the FBI to harass and target Martin Luther King. So whatever little BS voting for the holiday he did, I'm not buying it. Little token just said. Other than that, there's been nothing Strom Thurmond's ever done for Black people. He's never apologized. He's never asked to make amends. And this is Joe Biden's mentor. This is his friend. Come on, people. Come on, people. Like, how... How how is this guy president, man? That's my question. Please, man, answer me. Answer me. How is that president? That's all I want to know. How is Joe Biden president? 